So that is the flow rate that we would get out of the orifice. So if you wanted to maximize the flow rate, then obviously you can either have a larger cross sectional area or you could have H, uh, so the tank can be filled up to a larger height. What we would be interested in is what happens to the jet that emerges out of the orifice and as it falls down. So let us let us do some analysis on that. So let me draw the figure again. So this is your tank, this is the free surface and then let us say this is a jet that comes out of this. So this is the area, this was the section 2, maybe I should draw here, this was the section 1 and maybe I should call this as the section 3 and all this is the fluid. and of course it keeps flowing down. So I am interested in finding out what happens to the jet as it goes from the orifice right at the bottom of the tank and as it falls down. Let this area be A3 and the velocity here be V3. I will put a coordinate system and let me call this. Uh, Let me start the z axis from this point at 3. So, this becomes h and this is h plus h. And this time let me take this as the control volume. So for this control volume, I can apply the same equation that I have written here between uh, ports 1 and 3. So apply energy equation between 1 and 3. The pressure here is the atmospheric pressure, we already know that. In fact, this entire jet is exposed to atmosphere. So just like we assume that the pressure across the jet is atmospheric pressure, we can assume that even at section 3 it is the atmospheric pressure. This is an assumption that we are making. In fact, we know the pressure is going to be atmospheric on the surface, but we really do not know what is the pressure inside, but we are assuming it is a one dimensional flow at every section. So, the flow is uniform across the section and it only changes along one direction. So, that is what is a one dimensional flow. So, the pressure here is atmospheric and then you could again uh, put down terms in this. So, anyway uh, there is no shaft work, we are assuming there are no losses, it is an inviscid flow. The pressure terms would disappear okay. and I can as again assume that the velocity at uh, the inlet port V1 is very small. So effectively when I apply this equation, I am going to see the following V3 square by 2G and the Z is 0 here, the pressure is atmospheric. This would be 0 velocity at port 1 and this z value would now be h plus small h and the pressure is atmospheric. So, this would imply that my V3 is actually 2 g h plus h square root of this. Okay. So, what I am able to see is that my velocity at 2 was square root of 2 g h and the velocity of 3 is incremented by a certain amount 
as if now I am throwing a pebble with zero speed and it just keeps on accelerating as it goes down. Clearly, if the velocity of the jet is increasing, the cross sectional area must reduce for mass balance. So, I will make a note of that. that for mass balance between 2 and 3. So, these two sections I must have. So, we are going to do the mass balance between 2 and 3 these two ports and you can see that rho times V 2 times A 2 should be equal to rho times V 3 times A 3. I know what is V 2, I know what is V 3, I also know what is A 2, this is actually given to me as A naught, the area of the orifice. And therefore, I can see from this that A 3 is actually equal to V 2 by V 3 times A naught, which actually is square root of h over h plus h a naught. So, it is a very fine result. It shows us that as I increase my h, okay, this h is this height. As I increase my h, as I go further down, the jet contracts and the speed across the jet increases and uh, I would get a narrower jet. The pressure everywhere is of course, atmospheric. Okay. So, it is a very fine balance. As you can see to preserve the total head, what we are seeing is the, so if I look at this term to preserve the total head, the velocity of the jet uh, it, it increases, the z actually reduces and this pressure term of course, does not contribute because pressure is atmospheric everywhere. So, it is just an interplay between these two terms. An interesting twist to the problem is the following. Suppose, I attach a tube of a constant cross section and then I discharge the tank, then what happens? So, attach a tube of constant cross section to the orifice. So, let me modify the problem. The problem now is to this tank, the same tank. I now attach a tube and the area is A naught. Everything else is same. The level of the water, this height is H and I am going to number these as 1, this as 2, perhaps this as 3 and another one level as 4. I am going to put a z axis starting from here and this height I am going to call as h. So, this is z equal to h and this is z equal to okay. So, the question I am now asking is this setup versus the setup over here, what is the change in the discharge rate? Do they do the two tanks still just discharge at the same speed? Does it make any difference? So, first let me choose the control volume in the following manner. So, I would like to apply the energy equation between 1 and 4.
between 1 and 3. So I'm assuming that the pressure here is atmosphere and because now the, the length of the tube is h, the pressure here is going to be atmosphere at the end of the tube. So maybe I should say attach a tube of constant cross section to the orifice tube of length L. So the length of the tube is h. Okay. <clears throat> so if I apply the energy equation, so first at the output port, so I have V3 square by 2 g plus I have p atmosphere over rho g plus 0. Okay. This should be equal to the quantity that 1, so which would be V1 square by 2 g plus the atmospheric pressure rho g plus now the height is actually small h plus capital H and there are no losses and there is no shaft work. Okay. So exactly the same as before. Now V1 is nearly equal to 0, so this term goes away and I can get rid of the pressures and now you will notice that V3 is actually uh, square root of 2 g h plus h and therefore the q dot which is the discharge rate is actually going to be given as the area A0 times this velocity which is 2g h plus h. Okay. So this is very interesting. If I left a tank on its own and just uh, put a hole here and orifice here, then I get a certain discharge rate. But if I actually attach a constant area tube with the same diameter as the hole uh, and let it be of height small h, then actually I get a larger volume flow rate. Okay. So if you want to empty an, a tank now, you know how fluid mechanics can help you. Okay. What about the pressure? Please notice that pressure at point 3 is atmospheric pressure. Pressure at point 1 is atmospheric pressure. So I am curious to know what happens to the pressure inside. Okay, let us find out. So what we will do is we will try to now see the velocity at point 2, the, the pressure at point 2 and so on. So let us work that out. Let us apply the energy equation between point 3 and 4. It is a constant area pipe. It is an incompressible fluid, it is water. Okay. So the argument is that the velocity at 3 and 4 are going to be equal for the steady flow. So V3 is actually equal to V4 and we have already computed what is V3, so which is square root of 2g h plus h. So this is simply from mass balance. Now when I apply the energy equation, so first I write down the terms at the exit. So we have already seen this is V3 square by 2g and let me say this height is z. So I am interested in the pressure at 
the point 4 which is z. The pressure here is P atmosphere at section 3. So, this is divided by rho plus the z is 0 here and this now is equal to the energy at level 4 because I am not I am saying there are no losses and of course, there is no shaft work. So, that again would be equal to V 4 square by 2 g which actually is equal to. So, this V 4 square is equal to V 3 okay. and the pressure I want to find out. So, let me leave it P 4 by rho and the height as we know is G z. So, these two terms cancel out and you will be able to see that P 4 is actually given as <coughs> P atmosphere minus rho G z. Sorry, there should have been a g here. So, very interesting. So, pressure is atmospheric here, it is atmospheric here, but then there is some kind of a suction in the tube. So, as I, so this is P atmospheric and then as I go up the pipe, then at this point I would get the P atmosphere minus rho g of h, the water column. So, it is very interesting to plot the pressure here. Let me do that for you. So, this is the water tank, this is section 1, this is section 2 and this is section 4, 3 and let me draw the pressure here. Okay. So, I will draw the gauge pressure. Recall gauge pressure is P minus the atmospheric pressure. Okay. So, we already know that the gauge pressure at point 3 is 0 because that is exposed to the free stream, I mean the atmosphere. We know that the gauge pressure at point 1 is 0. We also know from this equation that the pressure actually becomes uh, smaller. So, the gauge pressure becomes negative as you go to a larger z. So, this is my z axis. So, this is how my pressure would behave. It takes a negative value here, but I can apply the energy equation from point 1 to 2 and I could similarly calculate what is the pressure. I am not doing that for you, but it is very easy to see. You would see that the pressure 1 is atmospheric and then as you keep coming down at different levels, there is a hydrostatic head that attaches to it and you would get this pressure over here. So, this height is rho g capital H and this height over here is this height is rho g small h. So, this is the kind of pressure variation you would see. So, the pressure increases up to the point 2, then it very quickly changes and becomes a suction and then it again increases as it goes to the point 3. So, what you see in this flow is that the direction of flow is in the increasing pressure which is quite remarkable. One would expect that the flow would be in the direction of decreasing pressure. Okay. So, suction would uh, cause the flow to occur, but there should not be any surprise here because the energy equation tells us that it is not the pressure which drives the flow, it is actually the total head. 
so it is the pressure head the elevation head and the velocity head and indeed we are at a place where there are no losses okay there is no shaft work so the total head remains constant throughout that's what is the energy balance telling us but indeed this is very interesting that because of the assumptions that we have made we see some kind of a pressure discontinuity here if there were losses so let me show you what happens if there are losses then you would get essentially a picture like this so this this would be the diagram if you would plot with losses it's easy to get this diagram because then you would have to account for the loss term here and you would see that the energy at the downstream point would have to be lower than the energy at the upstream point okay all right so we'll stop here and in the next class we are going to talk about some more examples with the application of the energy balance thank you